Well, my fashion discovery started since very little when I used to steal from my grandmother, my mother, whatever they had in their closet. My grandmother is very vain and very proper, very perfectly put together. My mother was a little more relaxed, very, very 80s, very 90s, and a little more hippie-ish. I think I got the best from both. Um, there's pictures of me holding fashion shows and Miss Universe with my friends and dressing them up. But I think it came naturally just by looking at the, these two women that are, you know, the two pillars of my home. During high school, I was very creative. We used to wear uniforms with tie and a little skirt, and I always had to wear differently, I remember. Clothing was my first form of like expressing my character. Since fifth grade, maybe? I started doing everything with my hands, drawings, uh, tie-dye, uh, manual things. And I think I first thought of, of studying fashion design. I was 15, 14, when everyone started talking about what are we gonna do in life, I asked for a sewing machine. And I started sewing. I took a couple of classes, so I didn't destroy the sewing machine. I felt I was the best thing in the world. It was fun. And after that, I went to fashion school in Milan. That's when I went crazy. I used to wear everything and anything that I used to find. I just went crazy and explored my own style through my clothing and through my designs at the end. And I guess it was the time when I just found myself. Actually, my teachers used to tell me but I was very stubborn. Why, why into clothes? You should do accessories because all my designs started from my accessory. And I was very stubborn. I said, I want to be a fashion designer. This was in 2008 and I started my brand in 2014. So my Italian dream ended when I didn't get the papers and I was illegal for a year and I got sick and I couldn't go to the hospital because, of course, I would get deported. So um, I just decided to go back home. I was miserable for two years, and I think in those two years, I really, really did everything in fashion that I could. And I think I did so much that I, it pushed me to decide into getting into one thing, which was jewelry. I think after that, I said, OK, let's start thinking of what I want to do myself and I just started looking for jewelers because I don't know, I don't know silversmithing or jewelry as a fact. And I spent like a year and a half just spending money, all my savings died. A miracle happened that I told my grandmother. My grandma always says, oh, you don't, th you don't listen to me and I never listened to her. And so I decided to listen to her and she told me that at that moment her Italian jeweler the guy, his apprentice that he had taught since he was very young, was free and he needed work. So I just went along and as I sat down and we just started talking, we just clicked. I showed him, he got excited, then he said, look, but if we do this, and I was, yes, we just bounced back the ideas. It was a good pairing. It was like love at first sight. If I didn't have this good relationship with him, I don't think it, it, you know, we would be able to do such good things. And also if he didn't have such talented hands, he wouldn't be able to read my thoughts and translate my designs, which sometimes are very odd or different. I start my creative process by just staring at a blank page or sometimes I see something and I draw it and it looks horrible. Sometimes you just will find me just looking just straight, straight at a wall. And I start drawing in my head before I draw into paper. Take it to the drawer. He says, no, yes, but how are you going to do this? Okay, and then I modify it and then he makes it. That is mostly the process, you know. The best thing is to wake up every morning and just enjoy what you do and just don't think it's work what you're doing. Everything at the end is fun and it's work, which is good.